I had all kinds of funness. Funness? Is that a word, Christine? No. Funness. I had all kinds of funness uh, scheduled in my head. Yeah? And then, five seconds before we turn our mics on to start the show today, yeah. I get a... I My eyes scan across the computer screen, and I see this, and I'm like, oh my God. Chrissy Metz has a new boyfriend. Shut up! Chrissy Metz has a new boyfriend, and guess how uh, they met? On set. He slid into her DMs. Ew! Um, Is now, that a fat roll? Is now, that another name? Now listen, I don't know <laughs> what Chrissy Metz's voice sounds like. Oh, she's got a fine voice. But it says, Chrissy Metz met her new boyfriend when he slid into her DM. She says, quote, and so now here's an opportunity for me to quote Chrissy Metz. Oh, all right. In the voice I imagine she sounds like. I was, I was like, uh, let me see if he's cute. <laughs> Why are you picky? <laughs> Look at my fat shaving. I'm the worst. Uh-huh. But it's only because I'm fat. So do you live with your boyfriend? Uh, no. Uh, uh, no. Thank you. Whatever. whatever. He, would, he would eat some of my food. <laughs> Make her sound like a big fat sea egg. He would, he, he would eat my crackers and cereal. It was worse. The last boyfriend she had, she met on set of This Is Us, and it was a camera guy. Yeah. And that just infuriated me. Why? What do you care? Well, because maybe I could have... Maybe I could have had a Chrissy cameraman Metz. boyfriend. Chrissy, Maybe that would have been me. Chrissy Metz uh, auditioned and got the role on the show on the... What, what's the show? I don't this even know. Is us. They were never going to give me that role anyway. Okay. They were never going to give Christine the role, but she was offered to audition for it. Yeah. Not with that attitude, they won't. And, Christine, and I said no. And Christine's like got a big attitude. I do have a big attitude. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, whatever. What do you mean, not, whatever? My attitude's not as big as Christian Metz. Right? Okay. <laughs> very new relationship. <laughs> uh-huh. So. Three months, I heard. Yeah, like around three Well, months. three is the magic number. Uh, uh, three months. Yes, it's been around three months. <laughs> We, we see each other every night at dinner. Oh, we say that. By th- are you I've with- heard between like three and five, it's like, okay, you either like dig your heels in or get the hell out. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, 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 I'm Wendy Williams. Yeah, 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 I love it. Oh, it's very new. It's very exciting, but, mm. but no. I'm just getting acclimated of like living in a home. Right. So, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just getting acclimated and doing my own chores. I've never been. Was she living in a cave before? No. Right. Yeah. Is he in the business? No. No. Yeah. He's just a regular guy. He, he's more than a regular guy, but he's not in the business. How did you meet him? Uh, on the Instagrams. Oh, I know, you know what? I heard about that. You know he's gross. I bet you five dollars he's a magician. Yeah, I bet you. No, he is. I will bet that's right. He's something. It's probably like your that, ex, like a comic or something. I was like, yeah. let me see if he's cute. Oh, he's cute. Uh, okay, I guess I can respond. Ew. Was Chrissy Metz? Ugh. Come on. Ew, I do. Yeah. As the kids say, he slid into the DM. I, yeah. yeah. I would never. Ooh. Chrissy Metz said, as the kids say, barf. I would never even um, admit that. Mm. We, he slid in my DM. Stop acting never... like you're too good to talk about where you meet people. Come no, on. No, no, no. Like that. I'm too old. I would be humiliated if I, quote unquote, met somebody mm. on the Internet. No. Yeah. I was meeting people on the Internet in the 80s, Christine. Yes. There was a, a chubby girl in Fredonia, New York, that had a crush on me, and then she sent me a, a photo in snail mail. Yeah, and what happened? Yeah, I never never talked to her there again. There you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well. <laughs> no. Yeah, <laughs> Chrissy Metz. I don't want to. I know you're doing this for me, and I appreciate it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I buy too much. Tell yeah. me to back off, but I'm nosy. Tell me to back off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What did he say to you to make you holla back? Well, he- oh, yeah. I got donuts. <laughs> he just put a bunch of donuts around his wing. Yeah. <laughs> he put a Krispy Kreme on the bottom of his ding a and then another one on top and said, uh-huh. 
And she went, hello, hello. Here's the thing. So, like, I get, thankfully, a lot of messages, and I don't always get to see them all. Right, okay. And so there was some, uh, he had messaged a couple. Because there's uh, so many. So many. Back off, I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get to all of the, what, what's the, I can't, I can't respond to every chubby teacher. <laughs> Times, but like very sweet, but not obnoxious or weird. Right, right, right. And then I was like, yeah, 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 yeah get to oh the point. God, yeah, wait, you guys are boning already? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Wendy Williams, all she cares about. <laughs> Shut up and get to the fornicating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see if he's, is he cute? Oh, he's cute. Okay. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> he's good to eat. Right, 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 right. He's got food, he's got pizza. Right, 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 right. It's just him in a bathtub full of cereal. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I can respond, but I waited a little bit. Okay. Right, because you can't be too eager, Beaver. Right, right, right. And so then okay, I. Right, 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 right. But right. you can't be too eager. Right, right, right. Right, right, right. God, between Wendy and Chrissy Metz, Jesus <laughs> the Christ. What ridiculous chat. <laughs> Cluster F. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, How did you meet him? Uh, on the Instagrams. On the Instagram. Uh, on the on the food Instagrams. Yeah. You can't say that too. The Food Networks. <laughs> Chat rooms. I met him in the kitchen of every restaurant. <laughs> At the Danny's. Oh, jeez. All right. I'm only fat shaming Chrissy Metz because uh, I like because it. Because you love it. I know. <laughs> it makes me happy. Mm-hmm. I don't worry about Hang it. Hang on to Instagram. <laughs> oh, Is what? she thinking it's cute? Yes. Is that what yeah. Why no. do women? Why do women guffaw when it's just women? If there was like any man sitting around, they uh, every one of these women would have held back their awes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. As the kids say, he slid into the dance. I, yeah. Right. Uh, I thought they were saying ew, and I was no. like, yeah, that is gross. Nope, it's aw. Ew. <laughs> Ugh. I don't know. Who did? Uh, Glad she's happy. Whatever. Did El Chapo Guzman got sentenced to life in prison. Yeah, that was a big surprise, huh? Mm. I'm kind of bummed about it. No, please. Way. Come know. on. You know, it's just, a, it'll be three or four years and yeah. he'll find his way out somehow. And he'll get out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. A guard will do like uh, their rounds at 3 a.m. Yes. And they'll do a little uh, clink with a tin coffee cup on the bar. Dink-a-dink. Uh, and then they'll see a cantaloupe. Yes. On the pillow. Yeah. With drawn and, eyeballs. And count it. That's a head. <laughs> yep. That is a cabeza. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Late that morning, when they realize it's not what? Guzman, it's a cantaloupe. Yep, he's in a hole. Actually, in a hole behind his Rita Hayworth poster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> should have known. He still has his whole operation up and running too. I saw this on the news yesterday that he was so efficient in running the cartel yeah. that his brother and his sons are all running it still, so it can run without him. So they're still generating billions of dollars. So they have the, it's the done, capital to make it happen. It's done nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's done nothing. So they'll go. Mm-hmm. Uh, line one, Doug. Oh. Want to jump in on the Chrissy mm. Metz? Oh, fashion. Doug, good morning. You're on the air. Hey, you guys are cracking me the heck up. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to figure out uh, what planet Wendy Williams is from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She's from the island of... Yeah, 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 yeah. She cracks me up. <laughs> All right, Doug. Creeps me out. All right. yeah. She cracks him up and creeps him out. All right, Doug. <laughs> I agree with that sentiment on Wendy Williams. I don't under, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> I you never I mean? did. Like, I just, when I first saw her on television, I was like, what is that? Yeah. What am I looking at? I go, oh, wow, she's a real popular radio host. Yeah. Why, why didn't she just stay on the radio? Yeah. She's got big boobs. <laughs> oh, is yeah. Is that why? Yeah. yeah. Does she? All yeah. right, 609, we'll get a break, and then we'll come back and hit some headlines. This is Area 51, Kevin Spacey, uh, Paul McCartney. John, John Stewart is in headlines today. Uh, he wants to go after a senator from my home state of Kentucky. Oh, wow. Uh, Kathy Griffin and Andy Cohen. <gasps> I told you Andy Cohen was a piece of garbage. You did. Yes. You called it. I did call it. Seriously. Uh, we'll get to some headlines next. Don't go away. Our society, we call this Frank Show Entertainment News. All right, 626, and if you've not been living under a rock for the past week, like I have been, I've been, I for the past week, I've been living under a rock, and even I heard about this. So living under the rock like I did, I heard about the, the storming of Area 51. 
Brad, you're familiar with the storming of Area 51? Of course. Uh, you, you said yesterday that you wanted to participate and be part of it. I did not say that. Oh, okay. I, I said I'll watch the live stream on Facebook oh. and I support the people uh, mm-hmm. That's doing it. But yeah, but I'm not going to actually physically no, go you're there. I'm not going to be there. No, I'm not uh, stupid. Well, there's a whole lot of talk about aliens on the interwebs right now, and it's even driving people to go hunting for extraterrestrials on the web's biggest adult video website. Pornhub. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, in the wake of the viral Facebook event about storming Area 51, began making the rounds earlier in July, searches for both Area 51 and aliens have spiked on Pornhub. Frank, I know you love talking about it, but when I used to work at the porn store, yeah. anytime <laughs> something would come up, like that would be alien or whatever, we'd get all these alien ding-dongs, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and we'd have to put them up front, uh, uh, like at the at the cash wrap, yeah. you know, and we'd have to, yeah, we'd just have to like, you and we'd cre- have- You'd create an ISLN display yes. for whatever- uh, yes. for, for for whatever headline was in the news of the day. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that ba- meant baby Jessica fell down the well. Yep. It was all <laughs> well, yes. porn. Yes. well porn. Yeah. Yep. Well porn. Yeah. That's yep. how we're wired, man. It's weird. <laughs> help me. Help me. Uh, and all these well pornos and uh, had to put them on the end cap. Since July twelfth, searches for Area Fifty One have taken off like a rocket to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> taken uh, off like a rocket. Between July twelfth and July sixteen, there have been more than one hundred and six. 60,000 total searches with nearly 59,000 searches logged for just Tuesday alone. Oh. And there's a graph of Area 51 searches. You can see the graph going oh. to the sky. Well, like a rocket to Mars. Like a rocket to Mars. Have you ever watched any extraterrestrial porn? Uh, yeah. I mean, they had like, they had lots of that kind of stuff. Brad, who are you asking? 90s. Uh, well, I was asking. It's Yo, funny. Asking yeah, I got to start stating names. But it was a general question to both of you. And, of course, Christine <laughs> says yes immediately. Yeah. yeah. No, I have never even heard of it. I oh, really? Oh, come on. Oh. Yeah, you get creative with your porn options. There. Somehow, alien impregnation managed to rate as the highest search term, uh, even above alien sex, alien girl, and, of course, alien probe. Uh, alien probe. And E.T. A, bone home. Uh-huh. And in case you were wondering, Alaska leads the way on these recent spikes and searches, followed by West Virginia and Wyoming, proving love of aliens on Pornhub have no geographical limitations, although I would uh, argue those states probably contain the greatest amount of least educated people. Oh, not Alaska. Uh, West Virginia and Wyoming? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Alaska seems like they eh. got it. They yeah. might have a lot of sightings up there. Yeah, oh, they're maybe. close to the Arctic yeah. and they got oil money. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got an uncle in Wyoming. Yeah. Who's dumb. Yeah, he's an idiot. <laughs> a right. moron. Right. So now you know what to get him for his birthday? Uh-huh. Yeah. Alien porn. Yeah. <laughs> He's a, no, by the time you get it to him, he'll be like, I already seen this. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> you got to do something nice, make it something I haven't seen already. Yeah. A documentary. Oh, that's nothing. Okay. All right. All right. So there you have it. Oh, uh, Kevin Spacey's in the news. Is he? Yeah, because prosecutors dropped the groping case against <gasps> him yesterday. Why? Yeah, he got away. Mm-hmm. Get away with it. Uh, because the witness, the guy that was accusing him, decided not to uh, pursue it anymore. The actor, oh, he was just over it. The actor oh. was facing a felony charge of indecent assault and battery yeah. on Nantucket. District Attorney Michael O'Keefe said in a court filing that he was filing a no prosequi, which is a legal term uh, based in Latin, I would imagine, that uh-huh. I don't know. But it means due to the unavailability of the complaining witness. There it is. Oh. He got paid off somehow or just... Was lying this entire time. I mean, I, the, Kevin Spacey. I bet Kevin Spacey has no idea what happened. Uh, I bet it was Epstein who took care of it all behind <laughs> Spacey's back. Trying to help him out. Uh-huh, trying to help him out. predator. Uh, that's right. Hey, I got you, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Something happened. The accuser said Spacey allegedly bought him several alcoholic drinks and then groped him. Yeah, I well, remember this. that's what this. you do when you buy a young, handsome teenage boy alcoholic drinks, right? I don't know about that. Mm. Is this the guy who was texting his girlfriend going, I think he's gay? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. Is this, what's going on, his mom, babe? His mom's like a Boston news reporter or something. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's grabbing my wiener. I think he might be gay. Yeah. Uh, the complaining witness was informed that if he chose to continue to invoke his Fifth Amendment right, that the case would not be able to go forward, O'Keefe said in a statement. Yeah. Prosecutors met with the accuser and his family to discuss the case on Sunday. 
And that's when they said, if you're going to continue to assert your Fifth Amendment, then the case has got to go away. Yeah. What? Why are you doing that? Right. Without a witness, there is no you know, case. Well, the Fifth Amendment, isn't that you're not going to... Uh, you plead the Fifth. But you're not testifying against... I know, that's what I... <laughs> fifth! That's, Dave Brad, Chappelle taught me that. Brad's, Brad's legal analysis on what the Fifth Amendment is. You plead, you, you plead it. Yeah, okay. he, he pled it. But it's it, over. It means that you're not going to... Fifth. testify against yourself. Yeah, it means you, you don't have... Incriminate act. yourself. Yeah, that's right. So what is he... Well, he doesn't want to incriminate like how far he actually might have went. Oh, this, uh, allegedly, allegedly he would have had to have uh, uh, discussed the fact that him and Kev- Kevin went back to his hotel room and, and did like a gay 69 or something. Yeah, yeah, he's so confused on the definition of what is gay behavior Yeah, that and once he described everything that happened that night to his girlfriend, she's like, no, that's gay, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got tricked. Yeah. Paul McCartney is going to write a, a musical called It's a Wonderful Life. Oh. Producers are aiming for a late 2020 launch of the show. Paul McCartney writing his first stage musical, an adaptation of the classic movie It's a Wonderful Life. The former Beatle collaborating with Billy Elliot playwright Lee Hall, who also wrote the screenplay for Rocket Man. Oh, nice. As well as East West End producer Bill Kenwright. All right, so is uh, is this uh, Paul McCartney going for the EGOT? Well, May, I, mean, I feel like he already has an EGOT. Does I have he have an EGOT? That, yeah. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. What would he have an Oscar for? Uh, oh, well, just original songs, yeah. Yeah, he's done Let's that see. for... Ha- has he? Has yeah, he? Live and Let Die. It wasn't that for... Oh, yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, James Bond? Uh, James Bond? Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. John Stewart uh, eviscerates Rand Paul for blocking a 9-11 victim funding. I sa- can't believe it. Saying this. it's an abomination. The former Daily Show host told Fox News that Paul was trying to balance the budget on the backs of the 9-11 first responder community. Yeah. How uh, big is this community anyway? I mean, it can't be like... Can't be that big. Right. And what, why can't they have money? And then... Uh, uh, we have uh, money for all kinds of stupid stuff. And then Rand tweets out yesterday, well, no, I'm not I'm not denying them the funding. I just want to make sure it's paid for. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, like you... Um, okay. Yeah. He needs to know how voting works. He um, understand his job. Uh, let's see. The Emmys. Three nominated Game of Thrones stars... Uh, you've got Alfie Allen, who played Theon Greyjoy. Uh-huh. You've got Gwendolyn Christie, who was Brienne of Tarth. Yes. And then Karis Van Houten, who was Melisandre. Man, some of these names just sound like they're names on Game of Thrones. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, what? Why did he even change them? Well, so Game of Thrones performers Alfie, again, who played Theon Greyjoy, Gwendolyn, uh-huh. and Karis Van Houten, on Tuesday morning got Emmy nominations yeah. Which caught many by surprise, including, it appears, the team behind the show's award campaign. Oh. HBO did not submit these three actors for Emmy nominations. What? HBO confirmed that it did not enter the trio for consideration oh. by the performer's peer group. And that each of the performances via their reps went ahead and submitted themselves, picking up the two hundred and twenty five dollar entry fee. Sounds like our bosses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if we want something done, we gotta do it ourselves. Absolutely. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Oh, I'm surprised that not everybody does this. I I I just assume that that was your agent's job mm. is to submit you for. Uh, not I, I, not it's company. not even the agent. I think that's, you know, just the production company. Huh. And they want the awards. They want the accolades. They yeah. just didn't believe in their actors, I guess. Uh, yeah, not these three. Yeah. Schmucks. Right. Whatever. That's neat. Uh, Kathy Griffin says Andy Cohen treated her like a dog when she worked at Bravo. And that she's not interested in chasing down Anderson Cooper to make nice with him. Did you know they're not friends anymore? Yes, uh, I have heard Ka- that. Kathy yeah. and Anderson? Yeah. Over over what? Over her holding up a, yeah. a bloodied head? Uh-huh. What? Yeah. Well, because he said that it was too far. Anderson mm. Cooper was too much for his delicate sensibilities. Oh, okay. And he didn't like it. Oh. And spoke out about it instead of calling her and being like, girl. Right. What is this? Yeah. And then Andy Cohen and her got into a thing, too. Andy's what gross, was- by the way. Yeah. He's super gross. She uh-huh. alleges that he offered her cocaine two times yeah. on his show. Right. Uh, well, watch what happened live. Watch what happens live. So he's just like on commercial break, like you want to do a bump? Yeah, yeah no. And he also is like all, always denying the coke use too. Right. With Andy Cohen. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> but he always loves the no. cocaine. Yeah. 
Well, okay, so these two are fighting, and then Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen are besties. They right. all tour together. Oh, yeah. They're no. super good friends. Yeah, I've had uh, Andy on a couple times. You want it's, to talk about a weird interview? It's never been good. No. I mean, this you guy's warned weird. me. I, I warned you. I said, this guy's going to be full, full of energy for about 45 seconds, and then he's going to trail off. And it was exactly that. <laughs> it was the hardest. It was like pulling his teeth, getting him to answer questions towards the end. And I mean, we were talking to him for like six minutes. Yeah. We didn't even use the whole 10 minutes. It was weird. So Brody Jenner's now opening up about Caitlyn Jenner skipping his wedding. Aww. Yeah, which got to suck for his mom dad not to be there. Brody's uh, quite over the fact that his dad skipped his wedding to Caitlyn Carter. Wait, okay. That's, no, that's same name. Wife. Same name. Another Caitlyn, babe. <laughs> yeah, which got to be weird. Uh, well, I mean. Uh, 35-year-old yeah. Brody had dinner with his wife, his brother Brandon Jenner, and his mom Linda Thompson. During their conversation, 69-year-old Linda opened up about her relationship with Caitlin. I met your dad. I married your dad. Had this great, happy life here in Malibu until that fateful day when Bruce said to me, I want to transition. Yeah. <laughs> she said, my life just did a 180. In my mind, I lost my normal, my family, my wonderful husband that I thought I would, that I thought would be forever. Aw. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't. I'm looking at all these photos of Caitlyn Jenner, and it's, it's still, it, it's, I can't get used to it. Still. You can't? No. Oh, I am. I remember seeing him on the cover of the Wheaties box in 1976. Yeah. But that, that person, though, that you saw in the Wheaties box, like, that never existed to Caitlyn. Oh. That person was a lie. Oh. The person that you think is real. But that, why but, he was so, but, but that person was so athletic. Yeah. But that person was a lady. Yeah, well, the reason why I was so fast, he was running from himself. Yeah, mm, it might true. be. Mm-hmm. There might be something to that. Uh, 638. All right, there's some headlines. We'll be right back. More Frank next. Okay, well, uh, it, it appears that this is good to get rid of homeless people and also classic rock morning show listeners. Oh, sorry. There we go. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> It turns out in West Palm Beach, they're using music to drive away the homeless people. Oh, my God. The city is playing a torturous loop of children's songs overnight to keep people from sleeping around the patio of the city's lake pavilion. Uh, A biblical example. Joshua's Israelites trumpeted ram, ram's horns, to terrify the people of Jericho. Oh. A Hollywood example. Helicopters blared Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries through loudspeakers while strafing Asian villagers in Apocalypse Now. In real life Panama in 1989, U.S. soldiers played high-volume rock and hip-hop to roust Manuel Noriega from his lair. At Abu Ghraib in 2004, American interrogators blasted heavy metal to weaken Iraqi captives' resolve. Baby shark. Mommy shark. No, stop it. Now, the city of West Palm Beach has launched a music offensive as well, playing torturous sound loops all night long of the children's songs, Raining Tacos, and Baby Shark to keep the homeless from lying about the patios of the city's Lake Pavilion. Raining Tacos? Is that, a, that? is that a new kiddo song? I don't know. I don't want to know. Although I love tacos. Let's go hunt. Is that what they say in the song? Yeah. I know that was Tacos? Yeah, now I'm getting it's raining tacos here okay. as soon as the ad plays. Mm-hmm. It's raining tacos. I don't hate it either. We getting tacos today? I'm sorry. This is making me happy. This isn't. I. I, uh, This would not drive me away from sleeping on a patio. Seriously, if you're trying to keep homeless people away, don't play this song because they're going to be starving. They think they could go to a paradise where it rains tacos. They're hungry. Yeah. 
tacos. This song still has another minute left, and I'm going to play the whole thing. Oh, jeez. Cheese, 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 cheese. Tacos. Oh, the bridge. Oh, break it down. Tacos. <laughs> What's the date on this? When did this song come out? I don't know. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> 2012. Oh, wow. Tacos! Tacos. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why do uh, you sound so disappointed, that was Christine? Per- that was Aww. Perry Grip and Boon Bum with their big hit rating Tacos. It's raining tacos. Yum. It's just mean to do this to people. Like the like the other examples that they use in this article or that you said, Frank, about, yeah, you know. Right. Like, I mean, this is like in t- used in times of war and to get criminals out and, you know, to, uh, come on. Yeah. Is that mean to do that to people too? Going to no, gas I'm you just, out? I'm just saying that. Play like, Baby Shark next time and fart in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. It's raining tacos on your face. Oh, man. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's raining silent but deadly. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I heard it from my room, so. Listen, that Christine. Sound? Hey, this is just an audio version of fences. I got, you know, I'm driving around the other day, and there's fences everywhere. Stay out. Everywhere you go, there's fences. Don't come in here. Stay out. It's signs, a, signs yeah, everywhere. Yeah, signs. That's our culture. That that, I get, that's but, our culture. That's our society. We're keeping people out of everywhere. I and it's know. the same thing with this. You know, you will get... You, <laughs> West Palm Beach is just a fancy, rich place, and they don't want those dirty people laying about yeah. our city I center. And, oh, yeah. uh, would okay. I want homeless people lounging uh, by my front door at my house? Nope. No. Yeah, I'll answer that one. <laughs> so you got deaf homeless people. It doesn't stop the deaf. I guess. <laughs> Thank God it's radio. You do not want to see this. Here's more Frank on 96.1 KLPX. All right, 710, it's the Frank Show. Uh, yesterday was today's Thursday, so was it yesterday we put the, the the old photos of us up, Brad? Yes, the face app. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday Brad came in with the camera and then took photos of us, and then we used the face app to age ourselves, and then Brad did a little photo collage and put it together up on the Frank Show Facebook page, and people made their comments. Mm-hmm. A lot of Santa comments on there. A lot of folks seem to think that I uh, resemble Santa. You know, in 20 years, well, we're going to look like that. I 20 have, years? Uh, Let's hope it was like more like 30, 40. Oh. My photo turned out particularly aged. I, I, I ended up looking like I'm 90 years old, I, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, hair's all white. Complete, yes. complete white. Uh-huh. And, uh, but, but a bunch of comments, oh, you look like Santa. Yeah. Oh, well, well, you should do Santa this year. Well, that's not this, no. Oh, you should do Secret Santa. Oh, look at that. It's Santa. Shut up. Yeah. Why don't you do, play Santa for some charity? No. Right? No. Um, so, <laughs> that, that's cute. That was fun. Oh, we all used the face app and made ourselves look old. That's yeah, fun. and gave our face to the Russians. Well, so then, later in the day, I'm on my phone, and all of a sudden, I see everyone talking about the face app, and it's owned. Stand by. Okay. Ready? Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, so then I found out that the face app that we were all using to uh, take photos and age ourselves is owned by the Russians. <laughs> Russia owns the face uh, app. Mm-hmm. So what? And so now they've got access to every single image on your camera roll. Yeah. And in perpetuity can mm-hmm. use it forever. Forever and ever and ever. And ever, and ever. Mm-hmm. So the question is. When you're using a photo in the app, is Russia taking that photo and keeping it for ever? Yeah. Or is that pro- is the process of processing that photo, is it just done in a cloud? Well, here's what the folks at FaceApp had to say about all of it. And okay. I don't, there's really no reason 
for me to not take them at their word. Oh, uh huh. FaceApp chief executive Yaroslav Goncharov. Oh my God, I knew it was going to be like Ivan something. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I've been stealing your photos. Yes. FaceApp chief, chief executive Yaroslav Goncharov said it does not sell or share any user data with any third parties, especially not the Kremlin. Uh huh. God, that means exactly like we just turned everything over to the Kremlin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because Vladimir Putin just called us and was like, hey. Yeah. Hey. Hey, bestie. Hey. FaceApp performs most of the photo processing in the cloud, he says. We only upload a photo selected by a user for editing. We never transfer any other images from the phone to the cloud. Uh -huh. We might store an unloaded photo in the cloud. The main reason for that is performance and traffic. We want to make sure that the user doesn't upload the photo repeatedly for every edit operation. Sure, that's it. It's for your own protection. Uh -huh. Most I don't know why you guys are upset about this. Most images are deleted from our servers within 48 hours from the upload date, says FaceApp Chief Executive Yaroslav Goncharov. Um, all right, look, uh, Brad doesn't seem to be alarmed at all. Not at all. But uh, here, I mean, play this out, right? Hear me okay. out, Brad. Hear me out. Russia's got all of our data, right? Mm -hmm. It's got everybody's information. Right. They've got your they've got all your sexual fantasies, all your political leanings. They know about all of the history with family members. If if nefarious sources from Russia wanted to blackball or blackmail you, all they got to do is hop on their uh, little Google machine and find out what they want to find out about you, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So now they've got access to our camera rolls, right? Uh -huh. They've got even more blackmail information. Right. And uh, and what is going to end up happening is that we're all going to end up in a hard working labor camp. Right? Yes. <laughs> yep. Speaking Russian. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh huh. We're all going to end up in labor camps in Siberia. Mm. You know what? Be because, I because we put hashtag resist in our uh, Twitter bio. That's right. Yeah. I believe you, Frank, because I have been a longtime hater. As a child of the 80s, I have been not liking the Russians for many, many years. Right. You were basically raised to hate the Russians. Yeah, yes. Me too. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, me too. They've been the bad guy in every mm -hmm. single movie. Mm -hmm. Every Bond and, movie. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always and, the And the Rocky movie. Twitter and, users pointed out yesterday that the terms of service say the company has the, has the ability to use photos in just about any way without giving anything back to the users who first created them. So I w once I saw that FaceApp was owned by the Russians, I deleted the app from my phone immediately, uh, and, and felt feeling quite sure that I had just saved my own ass. I don't think you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about this is uh, people on Twitter and Facebook uh, calling other people stupid for doing the FaceApp mm -hmm. when it's like uh, Facebook owns all your content and data as well dummy and like actually look through all your apps and everyone every single app that you have pretty much agrees to the same thing <laughs> they're accessing all your photos and and data and if you think your pictures are that valuable then monetize it dummy like mm -hmm. no one wants to see your ugly ass and they're not putting you on a smirnoff a uh, vodka campaign uh, anytime soon. You're fine. Wait, hold on. Maybe. Is that someone's deep-seated fear that yeah. the Russian-owned face app people will use the image of an attractive woman made to look elderly well, that's and <laughs> use that in a vodka ad campaign? Use your picture, Brad. You, did you see your picture? My pictures look pretty good. I posted the younger version and the older version. I'm like, take it all. I put these pictures up on social media in the public anyways. Take it. Go ahead. I, you know, it's I, not just that, but like people use, like they use their phone for their bank records and they take screenshots <clears> and stuff. Like if they're getting your whole, I've 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 had phone, roll. I've had phone call, incoming phone calls on my cell phone from Russia. Not weird. That's because you t uh, talk out against Russia all the time, so you're on a list. But me, <laughs> I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> like, so I love Russia. Not, I don't love them. I just I don't care. And Brad's all like, Russians, you just remember me when the revolution comes. <laughs> I, 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 can't, so nice I can't understand why anybody wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't take Russia uh, and everything they say and flip it. It's mm. the, whatever they say, the opposite is the truth. Always. Every single time. No, we didn't the, just hand it to yeah. Vladimir Putin. Everything that Russia does is all about lying. Everything. everything. 
And now, look, the rest of the world's kind of starting to mirror it. I don't know. Yeah, I think the top, the you know, the top percentage, the government, and everything, yes, corrupt, and every, but the people themselves, and there's entrepreneurs there that I don't think are associated with the big bad Vladimir Putin and associates. No, no there's not. No, yeah. Vladimir Putin does not let anything yeah. happen they don't, without his thumb they, on they, it. They, no. I'll tell you what the I'll tell you what the yeah, working he's his beak wet. No, listen, I'll tell you exactly what it is because I've read about this. Okay, uh, Putin's got a ten percent theory. Okay. And the 10% theory is let people have 10% of what they want. And that falls in line with media, too. He'll allow a certain amount of media to report poorly about him, 10%. Right. But if it gets above that threshold, then he starts having people knocked off. Mm. So that's kind of what they do. And it's kind of the same thing with business. You, you're more than welcome to be an entrepreneur and to start a big business for yourself. Until it gets to a certain point. And then if you start growing a little too much, then uh, then that's when Putin swoops in. Does he take the 10% or 90%? He takes whatever he wants. Uh, Anything and everything he wants. Yes, he's a gangster, and it's not fair to the Russian people. But the, the face app, does is that really going to affect the millions of people who are using it right now yes. and posting stupid photos? Yes. How? They've already, gonna, they've already infiltrated gonna, our Russians voting gonna, system gonna, and all they're that. They're going to sweep into your home in the middle of the night and take you out of your bed. No, they're not. And they're going to probe you. No. Well, That's our own government, if you're brown. Yeah, that's true. What are you going to do? Uh, what? I said that's our own government, if you're brown. Oh. That's happening oh, with yeah. ICE yeah. and everything. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, seriously, <laughs> the Russians are the last of our Least of our problems. Yes, right they are. You're right. Brad's right. The Russians are the least of our concerns. For, we, sh we should be more yeah. concerned with uh, the Brazilians. They're yeah. making fake Lamborghinis and Ferraris in Brazil. Oh so. my God, Chamberlinis. We, can't, we the, can't have that. The humanity. <laughs> Seven nineteen. Dumbass of the day. Next is a guy arrested for assaulting. Dude, you've given me the same story for three days in a row. Uh, it was a, I'm gonna go, a week. I, no, I don't want to hear any goddamn excuses from you. You try to find no, a dumbass. Is no, I don't want to hear his voice. He's <laughs> upsetting me. All right. 731. Let's do this. I think you're stupid. Real stupid. He suffered brain damage. Brain, brain, brain damage. Dumbass of a day. All right. I don't even know if this is possible. Is, is it possible to drink 33 beers in one evening? Apparently it is. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. If you're a 48-year-old Michael Monahan, according to an arrest affidavit, that's what Monahan told <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're law enforcement and you've got to come upon someone that's not sober. Hey, how much have you had to drink? Two beers? Yeah. Is everyone's answer every right. time. Mm -hmm. Two this guy goes at 33. 33. <laughs> at least he's being honest. In an hour. Monahan told St. Lucie County Sheriff's deputies he did uh, he did 33 beers after accusations that he used foul language and tried to fight outside of Body Talk Sports Bar. <laughs> Body Talk. <laughs> what a great name for a meat market. Uh, deputies at 1140 p.m. on July 8th went to the adult entertainment establishment after a report of a man passed out in the parking lot. Investigators found a woman rubbing the back of an apparently unconscious man later identified as Monahan. The woman identified as Monahan's fiance said, be calm. Please don't fight them. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, Moynihan hopped up saying, oh, you want an expletive fight? Let's go then. Yeah. <laughs> she said the wrong thing. <laughs> Don't say the F word to him. De uh, deputies <laughs> oh, no. told Moynihan they were there to help, but his alleged pugilistic behavior continued. He put his fist up saying, let's go, expletive. <laughs> <laughs> Investigators took Moynihan into custody. His fiance said he ran around the parking lot and got aggressive before passing out. <laughs> <laughs> Moynihan of Vero Beach was taken to the hospital and said he'd quaffed 33 beers through the night. Yeah. Assuming they're 12 ounce cans, that would be three gallons of beer. Whoa. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> three gallons? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then he drops. And this dude still has a fiance? That's so cute. Uh, all right, Daytona Beach, Florida. Oh, Jesus. I hate this kind of stuff. Yeah, but at the end, it's pretty funny. Is it? Yeah, yeah. If you get uh, his quote on his way to jail, uh, it makes him the ultimate dumbass. A man is accused of throwing his five-year-old son into the ocean. He's now posted bond and was released from jail on Tuesday. The man reportedly left the child alone in the water 
as he repeatedly dove from a Daytona Beach pier. So the kid's throwing his five-year-old into the ocean and yelling at him to swim. Swim! Swim! Uh, W-E-S-H-2 News. Wesh 2 News. (laughs) Spoke with one witness who says he raced to help the little boy. Right. It's illegal to jump off the Main Street Pier in Daytona Beach, but that's what witnesses say John Bloodsworth was doing Monday night while his child was struggling to swim in a deep part of the ocean near the pier. I said, I can't take this no more. So I went down to the pier, down to the shore, and confronted him myself, said witness Mitch Brown. Wow. Brown's a former Georgia State trooper. He's on vacation in Daytona Beach with his family. Brown says they were having dinner on the Main Street Pier Monday night when he and his family noticed a child trying to bob above the waves on the side of the pier. The little kid was out there by himself, completely by himself. There was nobody around him, no adults, Brown said. Wow. Brown said other people were watching as Bloodsworth would tumble from the pier, swim past his child, and throw him into the waves while yelling at him to learn to swim. Fed up, the former trooper decided to confront the man. I said, you're coming with me one way or another. Good for Brown. Brown brought Bloodsworth to a Daytona Beach police officer who later arrested him. God damn it. That's what you got to do in a situation like that. Just got to get involved. I guess. Yep. Yeah, who who I, wants to get involved? I'd be like, 911. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get him come here real fast before this kid drowns. Yeah. I'm not going to help. Uh, the kid I'm was worthless. already very visibly upset and crying, and he didn't want to be there. The father's now facing a child abuse charge and a charge for disorderly intoxication in public. Uh, While at the Volusia County Beach Safety Headquarters, Bloodsworth allegedly said that he was going to jail for being awesome. Oh, my God. And that he would come back to the pier to jump off every day. (laughs) Way to double down, stupid. Oh, my God. Uh, Poor kid. Uh Yeah, but now he's not going to see his dad anymore. I I feel like this is probably the end of their... Yeah, well, now the police are involved, so... Uh, July 14... Florida, another Florida dumbass here. Oh, I guess, huh? I'm yeah, tired. they're dominating. Uh, oh, Florida. Um, a man left two children, one of whom suffers from brain damage and is severely autistic, home alone Friday when he spent four hours at a Florida strip club. Calvin Gucci has been charged with a pair of felony child neglect counts in connection with his late night excursion to the number four play gentlemen's club in St. Petersburg. It's the Four Play Gentlemen's Club, Christine. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, it's nine miles from the residence where he was supposed to be supervising the children. A criminal complaint does not reveal Gucci's relationship with the minors, whose mother was in Georgia attending her mother's funeral. Cops say Gucci was left to care for the children during this time. The court filing also does not indicate how police learned that the children were left alone. Or how long Gucci was supposed to care for them. Oh, my God. Gucci admitted leaving the children home alone while he was at the strip club where he consumed four or five Jack and Cokes. (laughs) I don't know, four or five? Gucci Uh then reportedly acknowledged that the children were unable to care for themselves, quote, especially in the event of an emergency. Police said one of the children suffers from brain damage and is severely autistic and physically disabled. When cops checked on him, the victim was located in his room with a urine-filled diaper. The victim, whose age was redacted from the complaint, is nonverbal and needs constant supervision. The other child, a girl, is unable to care for the victim nor herself, cops stated. So he just went to the four-play gentleman's club and had four or five Jack and Cokes. And who knows when he was going to get home. What's the bigs? You know, a lot of people think that just when a kid's asleep that they stay in bed. They never get they don't get out and do stuff. They just think like, <laughs> I know. as soon as they're down, they're uh, like, I know all right, bit. now it's time for me to leave. I know a little bit better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, finally in dumbass, Guthrie, Oklahoma. Two people arrested after a traffic stop of a stolen car. Revealed that the two had a rattlesnake, radioactive uranium, and an open bottle of Kentucky Deluxe. Yeah! Stephen Jennings charged with possession of a stolen vehicle, transporting an open container of liquor, operating a vehicle with a suspended license, and failure to carry security verification forms. Don't know what that is. It might be for the uranium. Oh, might be. <laughs> Rachel Rivera is charged with possession of a firearm after a former felony conviction. Yeah, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know what <laughs> you need to carry uranium. This was an 11 a.m. traffic stop in Guthrie's neighborhood <gasps> because the tag was expired on the car. Oh, my God. Jennings was in the driver's seat, Rivera in the passenger seat, and in the back seat, a pet timber rattlesnake in a terrarium. 
Well, you're just taking him for a ride. I guess. <laughs> uh, at about the same time Jennings told officers he had a gun and a console, police learned the Ford they were driving was reported stolen. So now he's got a rattlesnake, a stolen vehicle, a firearm, and somebody under arrest. This sounds like how <laughs> rednecks think um, a superhero gets made. Like, hey, let's get in the car. <laughs> We got uranium yeah. and the rattlesnake. Police also found an open bottle of Kentucky Deluxe next to the gun. To top it all off, a search of the vehicle revealed a canister of radioactive powdered uranium. When that happens, of course, we call in a company that deals with that specifically, and it's taken safely into possession, said Sergeant Gibbs. The uranium is the wild card in that situation. Well, they yeah. thought it was meth. <laughs> yeah, how and why? You know, how how do you get uranium and why? Uh, it says Guthrie police are still trying to figure out exactly what the suspects were going to use it for. <laughs> and still no charges from the rattlesnake either. So, Where do you get that? Is that an eBay thing? Rattle? Radioactive uranium? Oh, yeah. the, I, know where, I know where you get rattlesnakes. You can catch one of those. We can? Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't. Well, no, you're, you're, wuss. Not, you're not an idiot. I'm a wuss because yeah. I'm not going to catch a rattlesnake. No. Hey, yes, yeah. Brad. You're yes. gonna get a rattlesnake in your backyard. What are you gonna do? Well, you've already been in my backyard. Yeah, you didn't catch it. What What have I done? I go. Oh, look at that. There's a rattlesnake. Oh, really? Hey, you better be on your way. Ooh, that's scary. I've gone in my backyard and seen entire snake skins that have been shed. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've picked those up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> those are with safe. your bare hands. Yeah, with my bare hands. You're wow. so brave. Yeah. There's your dumbass of the day at 7:40. We'll be right back. More of the world famous Frank Show in a bit. <laughs> All right. 808. It's the Frank Show. <clears throat> um, so I was sitting here and I was reading through this thing. And then I come across this thing that Brad had put on the show sheet called a sex tip called Spell Coconut. Yeah. And it's going viral. Yeah. And I hadn't clicked on the link yet. And I go, oh, a sex tip called Spell Coconut. I know what that is. And I... In the in the group chat to Brad, I said, you know, b- back when I was sexually active. Yes. <laughs> right. When I actually tried. Yeah. Yep. Well, you don't try now. Like, what do you mean try? Well. He tries. Why does he do this to me? Please. I'm not throwing you under the there bus. You are. No, I'm you not. You don't know what's going on at my house with my wife and I, do you? Well, when you do, you, you don't know. know. Yes, do I do. I you listen to you. You don't know what goes on at my house, I, do you? I listen to your exploits. You tell, you share on the air. You hear what you hear when I talk on the radio. Right. Yeah. 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 You don't know what's going on in my house, Brad. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> I, try, I, I try all the time is my point. <laughs> no, when she gives you the green light, I mean, yeah. to really put in the effort. He does try. Oh. Uh, I had a chat with my wife a few weeks ago, and I said, hey, listen, this is uh, this thing where we don't do it. It's got to end. Yeah. And it was three weeks ago, and we still haven't done it. And then she just ignored him. Oh. And then that was a conversation. Spell coconut is a viral sex tip that has now turned into a meme. So, you know, I immediately thought of Robin Williams' Night at the Met comedy album. Yeah. He was talking, and this was in the 80s. Robin Williams was talking about how... Uh, b- before we meet someone now, we've got to go and get all of our blood work done and we got to go into a full body condom and all. Oh, okay. <laughs> it yeah. was a whole bit. And then he talked about, um, oral treats, um, a man giving those kind of treats to a woman. And he said, if you're going to do that, pack a lunch and stay the day. Right. I and don't I don't remember if it was Robin Williams or Sam Kinison that said, spell the alphabet. It sounds like a more of a Kinison thing. It does thing. sound like a Kinison thing now that I think about it. Right. I think it might have been a Kinison thing. So I took that advice and ran with it. Yeah. You know, again, back when I used to be sexually active. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, 20 years ago. Right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, it turns out this spell coconut doesn't have anything to do with oral treats. No. Not I at all. I thought it did too. I yeah. thought, oh, that's stupid. So there's a viral sex tip going around that has basically turned into a meme and it involves coconuts. And it doesn't involve sex with coconuts. The tip is when you're on top of your partner to spell the word coconut with your hips. And this is for ladies. Yeah. So just so we're all on the same page here. Yeah. <laughs> um, mentions of searches of spell coconut suddenly shot up in the last two days. Although it's not a totally new idea, according to Know Your Meme, the recent spike can be attributed to a Facebook group for Kenyan women called Kilimani Mums Urukuzon. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which means it. rock it until the socks fall off. <clears throat> <laughs> I love it. So names have been redacted, but uh, somebody in the group, Kilimani Mumzudaku, says, can someone explain to me how writing on top works? And oh. then there's a bunch of laughy emojis. Uh, and then underneath it, it says the very, f- <laughs> it's the very first reply says, write the word coconut with your waist. Am horny already. Oh, there you go. I clutch my pearls. <laughs> so Ooh. many women need to know this. I mean, as guys, we've been told to spell things our entire adolescent or adult lives, right? Yeah. To, to please a woman. We have? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've learned the alphabet thing. So many different tips. Uh-huh. Like, this is what you need to do. Right. They don't give tips to women. And a lot of women need those tips. Uh, you know what? Brad's on to something here, and I'll explain what, why I'm in agreement with okay. him. Okay. There's really so know. many women that think it's the man's job to do the sexing. Uh-huh. There's a lot of women that feel that way. Yes. And they like, want the guy to do all the work. From one. Yeah. Yes. And you yes. know what? I got to, as a guy, from a guy's perspective, uh-huh. guys like a woman to be active in the sex process. Well, I mean, I say I like it. Well, okay. I say but, thanks. But you Be also starfish. just lie there. Yeah. yeah, but I'm good at lying there. No, no. That's what you think. Yeah. I am good at yeah, lying right. there. Uh, write coconut with your waist. Thank me later. Spell coconut. A bunch of people are talking about spell coconut. Well, that quickly turned into a series of jokes in the private group. And that was then picked up by the Kenyan Post. Uh, here's a delightful headline from the Kenyan Post now. Write the word coconut with your waist. Kenyan ladies discuss how to ride a man during sex. And it's interesting. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the newspaper's yeah. great. Ladies on the famous Kilimani Mums have an amazing tip to those ladies who keep on complaining that they don't know to ride men during sex. It's very simple to ride a man, ladies, and leave him begging for more. Just go on top of him and write the word coconut with your waist. And if you think about it, you kind of write it out. They got the big round motions, the C and the O. and Oh, the you know, yeah. None of us were able to kind of g- g- garner a mental image of that on our own, Brad. Thank you. Oh, I'm just saying, take that extra second, <laughs> piece it together. Uh, so this one, uh, and now there's a bunch of dopey, goofy memes that people have posted. And this one, it, it kind of made me LOL. This one says him, spell coconut, me, okay. And then she goes, this is what I actually spelled. (laughs) 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 And then there's a bunch of late Kenyan ladies that are trying to spell coconut, which I... That's these girls making yeah. little videos with the music, and they're spelling coconut, but they're fully clothed as well. So yeah, it's, it's not as <laughs> that lady did a good job. Yeah, I could sit, I could sit and watch these spell coconut videos all day. Yeah, yeah. she's doing a good job. See, with most guys though, the women just need to spell cocoa, and then the guys will, you know, finish the nut part themselves. Uh huh. Mm, I was just gonna say, uh, I'll be good with just co. Go. <laughs> Go. Go. And I'm done. <laughs> um, so now, uh, now you know, guys, ask for your lady to spell coconut. Because co- spelling coconut's now gone viral. Ugh. Uh, the guy who started the Storm Area 51 craze. Yeah. He's now scared and nervous for his life. Oh, yeah? Uh huh. He's uh, come forward and revealed that it was just a joke. But now he fears being questioned by the FBI. Oh, yeah. He should be a little concerned. Maddie Roberts revealed himself as the author of the hoax in a KLAS TV interview. He said he started the Facebook page as a joke and was amazed at how it took off. Maddie said he broke cover out of fear the FBI would question him over the page. The Storm Area 51 Facebook event was scheduled to happen September 20th. Mm -hmm. More than 1.5 million people have already signed up. Damn. To see them aliens event. Let's see them aliens. And that's that's how he ended it. So, I mean, it's obviously a joke, right? <laughs> An immersive experience company called Area 15 was to live stream the event. Is that uh, U.S. Air Force even yeah. issued a stern warning to the conspiracy theorist? 
Well, there's this guy. Okay, so I just found an article about this guy, um, to Thornton T.D. Barnes. He's an Area 51 veteran. Oh. And he wrote this piece for Fox News where he is just like, do not do this. Oh, he, was, <laughs> he wasn't taking it as a joke. No, no. <laughs> he's just like, he's very, the whole article is just him going, I was in. I was in Korea. I. Was, I'm a veteran. No. I, and listen, this is a conspiracy. They have no evidence of there being aliens there whatsoever. Oh, sure. I guarded uh, Area 51 yeah. for ten years, mm-hmm. and you better you best stay out. <laughs> and this is not funny. <laughs> oh yeah, he's like real serious about it. Yep. There's a quote here. Um, let me. Oh geez, where? Oh yeah. Um. First and foremost, this is a great quote. First and foremost, what these people signed up for is not merely an act of trespass. It could well wind up being treated as terrorism. Uh, wow. Yeah. Terrorism. Uh, yeah, and an older fellow that uh, he, he don't p- possess the mental capacity to, to process jokes <laughs> and humor anymore. No, or the internet. In uh, fact, how do those... How do those participating know who is behind this plan? How do they even know these organizers aren't connected to ISIS or some other adversary or enemy using them to disrupt or penetrate the national security of the United States? (laughs) Oh, my God. It sounds like KLPX Classic Rock listeners. (laughs) And Fox News was like, publish it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a go. Thank you. How do we know this isn't ISIS? Well, this poor kid is all like... <laughs> more yeah. than one and a half million people from around the world say they plan to be in tiny Lincoln County on September 20th as part of a plan to storm Area 51, the top secret military base. Another million or so say they're thinking about joining the protest movement to pierce the secrecy surrounding the mysterious base. Thanks for joining us here at 6 o'clock. I'm Denise Valdez. And I'm Brian Loftus. Oh, yeah, no problem, Denise and Brian. If only a fraction of those people show up, it would have a huge impact on rural Nevada. Oh, just relax. These people are treated like it's a real news story. How did this get started and where is it headed? The I-team's George Knapp tried to find out. Well, as you know, we've been reporting about Area 51 for, oh, three decades or so now. (laughs) Oh, this guy. This guy's old. He's an old TV guy. This guy was doing... uh, TV reporting in the 50s. (laughs) So some of the seeds for this might have been planted right here. Area 51 is almost synonymous with secrecy. Almost? Oh, my God. This guy. Area 51 is almost shrouded in secrecy. Yeah. I'm sorry. Almost. And even though the person who proposed this idea meant it as a joke, it's taken on a life of its own in news reports, social media, and in ominous warnings issued by the... (laughs) <laughs> and we're a planet full of ignoramuses. No. Just a bunch of dumb animals. The U.S. military. This is what rush hour looks like on Groom Lake Road, the main drag into Area 51. As a- you know what? I hope they do it. I hope a million and a half people storm Area 51. Just just so all of these dopes can be like, oh, I thought it was a joke. <laughs> I think at least 15,000 people will. Well, yeah, I mean, I think there is going to be some sort of gathering, but is it going to be like, let's storm Area 51? No. no. Well, they're going to just rave outside of it. Yeah, yeah they yeah, just going to exactly. Yeah, they'll get some craft services. They'll get a DJ. Yeah. Weed is legal in Nevada, so technically they can have 50,000 people just sit outside of Area 51. Recreational or yeah. medical? Recreational. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did the whole thing now. Uh huh. And it's already in effect? Yeah. yeah. Or what happens in Vegas January gets forgotten one? in Vegas. I don't know, but I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Here's uh, rush hour in Area 51, and it's the dust behind one pickup. (laughs) The few employees dash for home, and others ride the bus with the blacked out windows. Now, why they why employees are being shuttled to and from Area 51 and buses with blacked out windows? Well, we yeah. have to storm it. Yes. We have to. What's going on? Well, they're, they're, they're transporting aliens on those buses. Imagine a million people with cars, RVs, and tents out here. It would be a madhouse. So we had an it, event. It would be a madhouse. Oh, God. I had to send you this article. The rest of it's crazy. The rest of what's crazy? This article from this veteran that I found. Oh, the guy who's just, on Fox News who oh, wants it, to make sure everyone understands ISIS could be behind. This is so serious. <laughs> <laughs> Area 51 is a training ground for counterterrorism operations. Oh. Whether he's ready or not. Frank! Now back to the Frank Show on 96.1 KLPX. I, uh, Listen, David Duvall is playing at Portrush in in the Open in Northern Ireland right now. No. 
I'm sad about it. I am. I'm sad for David. David needs to stick to the broadcast booth. This guy, you know, he's he's got uh, some incredible records under his belt as a golfer. He, David Duvall did some amazing things. I saw him card a 59 once in tournament play. Oh. Um... He, David Duvall carted a 13 on one hole this morning. Oh, that doesn't sound good. It's <laughs> it's a term I've never heard before. It's octuple bogey. Uh, I've never heard of octuple bogey before. Wow. That's eight over on a par five. Oopsie. Uh, uh, David started his day with back-to-back birdies, but then things soon went awry in a comedy of errors that included hitting the wrong ball, which is, I don't think I've ever heard of that in tournament play with professionals before. No. They usually, don't they have people like caddies? Caddy. Like, they have people that kind of keep an eye out for that sort of stuff and say, uh, oh, here's your ball, sir. Oh, so yeah. here's what happened. He carded an eight at the par four fifth, having needed three tee shots and somehow managed to fare even worse on the seventh hole. He took two provisionals off of the tee. Mm -hmm. All right, so for those that aren't golfers, a provisional. You hit your tee shot, but you're not sure if it's in play. Oh, I better hit a provisional. All right. Uh So if you're second, your provisional's in play, you'll want to find your first. Right. But if you don't, you play the provisional. Right. Okay. Okay. It's like your backup. That's right. Okay. Well, he took two provisionals off the tee. Oh. So that means he hit three tee shots on the same hole. Oh, boy. And then labored under the assumption that he was playing his third ball before it became apparent that he had hit his second provisional. So where's his caddy? So then he had to head back to the tee. Uh, He found the rough again, duffed a chip, and then shambled even closer to the cup before he registered a 13. You just said that whole sentence. It's like a foreign language. What? Break it down. What? He was like five words. Okay, so he headed back to the tee. Uh Uh-huh. So then he hits his tee shot. He found the rough again, which means he missed the fairway. Okay. Which is the Wh- fairway. Oh, the fairway is where you the, hit your tee the shot. Grass. The short grass. The short grass. Then Got on it. the sides of the short grass is taller grass. That's called the rough. rough. Okay. Which means it's a lot harder to hit your ball out of the rough than on the short grass. Right. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. So Following. after heading back to the tee, D- Duvall found the rough again, duffed a chip. <laughs> yeah. So what is that? Okay. Let's say your ball is, I don't know, 10 yards off of the green. Okay. And you want to chip it up onto the green and have it roll to the hole. Okay. So when you duff a chip, let's say your club gets too far underneath and the ball hits too high in the club face, and instead of your ball going 10 yards, it goes one yard. Uh Uh-oh, but it does go high. Or or not necessarily. It's just a duff. In other words, you're a dumb duffer. It's a dumb mistake I would make. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But Duval's a professional, and he did it. Okay, so he found the rough again, duffed a chip. And then shambled ever closer to the cup. Shambled. And then shambled ever closer to the cup. Shambled. Shar, Meaning he All probably right. took another three putts before he finally holed out and registered a 13. I just. <laughs> Do you realize that, yeah, you said that whole thing and none of it was English? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. duffed a chip and then shambled. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Cock and Mamie, chingles, the whatever. At one stage, it looked to have been even worse with a 15 showing on the official scoreboards before the eye-watering tally was revised downward. So, at the tournament, Port Rush, Uh, the the Open Championship, they had Duval score a 15 on the scoreboards. But they got it wrong, and then they revised it downwards to 13. Yeah, because even if they just, like, make it look better and put a 13 there... It's still pretty bad. Oh, it says here the Golf Channel analyst who doesn't play regularly anymore drew some sympathy from golfers for his first round 90 and quite a remarkable scorecard. <laughs> he scored a 90 in an open championship. Do you think he's like <laughs> mentally regressing or whatnot? No, he's like, got Alzheimer's no, or something? No, what yeah. happens if you win an open, then you get exemption for the rest of your, for the rest of your life until you're 60, I guess. You can just get into it. Which means you're a prior winner you're uh, welcome back every year yeah so that's he what david that's what david's doing he's it's same thing with john daly john daly was gonna play he he commissioned the rna which is royal and ancient i guess the federation that could, that rules golf or whatever okay. in in europe he commissioned them to let him ride a buggy that's what they call the golf carts over uh-huh. there okay can i ride a buggy i've got a bad knee and they're like nope sorry can't ride a buggy john daly won the open in 92 
Yeah, yeah. long and, time And this ago. guy, like, is still g- golfing shirtless, wearing denim jeans, drinking, right. smoking. Having a good time. Having a good time. Yeah. So that's what some of these uh, golfers that won decades ago still go back because it's, you know, it's the greatest it's event in golf. Yeah. yeah. It's but like for- a golfing reunion, <clears throat> it sounds like. Um, I've never carded a 13 or a 15. I always cut myself off at 8. Right. right. You just go, eh. <laughs> I go, you know Let's what? Just move on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost two balls on this hole. That's my limit. Yeah. I'm just going to sit the rest of it out. They're expensive. They are. The balls are expensive. Oh, it's yeah. just disgusting. Like, uh, $50 for a, a box of 12? No, it's too much. It's like $5 a ball. Right. Forget it. Yeah. I don't buy those, by the way. I buy cheap uh, second run balls. Yeah, can't you buy the found ones in the uh, lake or whatever? No, 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 no. There's a plenty of <laughs> there's, the- there's plenty of uh, second run golf ball websites uh-huh. that say they're they've only been hit once. Yeah, but none that were sitting in the bottom of a lake for a year or so. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, you know. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Um. All right, we'll get a break. When we come back, uh, I want to talk about cheese. Okay. Mm-hmm. You like good? You like cheese, Christine? Right? I I'm in love with it. Brad? Put it on everything. Yeah, uh, you know I've I've heard uh, non Americans mm-hmm. comment about Americans' love of cheese. Yeah. Now I know why. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's gonna make sense as soon as you hear. It. Oh yeah. yeah. Here's more Frank on ninety six point one KLPX. So let me tell you about that cheese. That you love so much. Go on. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, Because you know how it is. Maybe you're at some fancy pants dinner party. You go over to the snack table. You're like, cool, cheese. Yeah. And then then you have a block and you're like, oh, man, that's pretty tasty. I should probably have another, I don't know, another wheel. Sure. (laughs) Or just like melt it and let me put some sausage on it and bread. And and then like 10 minutes later, you're smearing cheese all over your face and and chest and nipples. Oh. Oh. Uh-huh. That sounds like me at parties. Well, <laughs> science now knows why, Christine. Why? Uh, Go on. Yeah, they're saying that cheese is basically cocaine. What? No, cocaine is a hell of a drug. Yeah. I was yeah. going to say it again. Cheese is basically a cocaine. Basically, it turns cocaine out cocaine is a hell of a drug. It turns out cheese triggers the same excitable brain parts as some of your favorite hard drugs. So would the opposite then be true? Theoretically, I guess. Like, oh, this meth is so tasty. Now I really want some lasagna. <laughs> this meth is like cheese. <laughs> um, so they investigated why food... Co- this happened at University of Michigan. They investigated why foods cause addictive behaviors, why some foods are addictive and other foods are like lentils. Yeah, like broccoli. Yeah. Uh, they, they found them. that the more processed and fatty the food, the more likely it was to cause addiction, which is why no one has ever been addicted to carrots. Uh, but uh, these little Debbie uh, donut sticks. Yeah, they're pretty good. I can't stop. Really? <laughs> yeah. You know, they've been calling cocaine like as slang cheese for years. Oh, is that like, right? Yeah, I've, I've heard people refer to cocaine as cheese. Oh, I didn't really? know that. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, the most addictive food they found in this research was, and again, shocker, pizza. But it it contains a lot of cheese. Yeah. Uh, And they're saying that the high concentration of casein, it's a protein that can ignite your brain's opioid receptors and produce the familiar craving for another hit, um, is is the culprit. So, um, wow. I heard this about Lay's potato chips that, you know, the yellow bag, the original Lay's potato chips, uh, work in your brain the same way cocaine does. Really? And there and there and I I don't know I heard this a decade ago so I can't open a bag of Lay's potato chips and start snacking without having it in my head that I'm doing a few bumps. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know it's addictive, so you tread lightly. Um, there in, in our pantry, I, mean, I guess in our pantry no. there are no less than five or six, not the party size bags, the family size, which are even bigger. Yeah. Uh, where it's just crumbs in the bottom. Yeah. And no one's, and then we get another bag and we open it and we eat the whole chips and then leave the crumbs. But the crumbs are the good part. Wow. Well, right. Like you could probably do a nice crust with the crumbs that I have in my pantry. Or you could put them on a sandwich. Do you ever lick the inside of the bag? You get yourself a little yummy nummy? Uh, you know what? It's weird that you ask that. Rub it on your gums? The mm-hmm. answer is no. But okay. when I was a kid growing up, I remember my father doing that. Yeah. He would take a bag of chips or whatever and then he would 
would pour whatever crumbs were in the bag in his mouth. Then he'd stick his finger down in and get all the crumbs wow. with his finger. See, that's the sign of addiction right there. Yeah, your your dad had a problem with food mm. and so, something. That's but, weird. I think it was more my mother. That had I a guess I mean food. I'm a fatty and I don't do that. Uh, casein is found in all dairy products, but the cheese making process concentrates it, which is awesome because Americans consume 35 pounds of cheese a year. Mm. Oh that's, wow, that's a lot of sweet sweet casein. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I probably do 50 pounds a year at least. Uh, and while even eating an aircraft carrier's worth of cheese will not yield any actual hallucinogenic effect, someone is almost certainly to try it now. Yeah, let's <laughs> see how much. Because they're yeah. saying it's like cocaine. See. I don't know. I This is the thing, though. If it is like cocaine, you know, I could just walk away from coke. Like, uh-huh. I can just not do it forever. I right. don't care. But I have to eat. So what does that what does that mean for someone who is fat? Like, you, what am I supposed to do? Are you saying you can't walk away from cheese? No. So if I, I let a trail, I can't waddle away from. Cheese. Right, if I let a trail of little cheese cubes, yeah, <laughs> would you follow that trail until yeah, there's no more yeah. cheese cubes? Yes, you could. You could trap me yeah. with a little box and a stick. You yes. know, we live by uh, like a Sweetwater Preserve or whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> Get her out there towards the lake. Yes, you could. Yes, I totally. And trick her into walking. Yes. You can have the last piece of uh, cheese tied to a string, yeah. yep. affixed to a stick yep. that's holding up a cardboard box. Right. That's a let's go hiking, Christina. I got my stick and my cheese. That's all I care about. The refrigerator box has been set up. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just follow you. And put the cheese in my mouth mm-hmm. and not even look up. Ooh, cheese. Oh, Ooh, oh, cheese. Oh, there's another piece Ooh, of cheese. Ooh, cheese. I'm like E.T. with the Reese's Pieces. Uh-huh. Yes. What kind, of, what kind of awesome cheese trail is this anyway? <laughs> oh, what did I find? <laughs> uh,